Hello and welcome to another player build. I am Iran and this is my spiel. At the time of its debut, the Hexblade was considered, and probably still is, the most useful dip into for martial and or charisma based characters. So I thought to myself, it's a cool gish idea, but it lacks a bit on the defensive side. How can we show that up a bit? How about with the most defensive tank class there is? Paladin. Paladin will provide the beginning of a tank while also giving us some support options, while Hexblade will take over offensive side. This way we only need a little bit of strength to carry the armor, or skills if you want, and the rest can be pumped into charisma and constitution. You can build this on dexterity and I have that build if you want it, comment down below if you do, but you can probably take this one, modify it a bit, and get a dex build. So now allow me to present the padlock. This build relies mostly on Hexblade, as we need Paladin only for the proficiencies you get at level 1, and some of the spell options and buffs. That's why I go Paladin 6, Warlock 14, as this grants us access to the Aura of Protection, a great defensive buff on any account, as well as the Warlock's subclass features at 14th and 7th level Mystic Arcanum. Too bad about the 8th and 9th level spells, but the 20th level feature is nice to have at best. I always like to start with abilities. With Bond Buy we can get 15, 8, 15, 8, 8, 15, starting as high as possible with the three most necessary abilities and dumping anything that doesn't directly contribute. For the background I choose Soldier. It gives you proficiency in athletics and intimidation, which are quite useful for pushing, grappling and the start of the more face side of the build. You also get land vehicles proficiency, if you're going to get into chase scenes or something, and you get a gaming set of your choice for gambling away your gold. Even with Tasha's way of treating racial ability score increases, the basic half-elf is still the best choice of race when the class is charisma heavy. Even tied to charisma, the half-elf gets more bonuses than any other race. Use it to boost strength and constitution, and don't worry about that odd charisma score, it will be taken care of in their usual way. For skills, pick perception, always good, and deception, showing up that face side. Take your first level in Paladin for those weapon and armor proficiencies. For skills, take Persuasion and Insight and your face side is as complete as it can be right now. For equipment, go with Longsword and Board, classic weapon and defense combo. You'll use it for a while. The next level will take in Hexblade. It gives a good early boost in damage and usability. Booming Blade is an excellent blade cantrip that scales up with character level, not class levels. Pick up the mandatory Eldritch Blast for your range option, Hex is also a great choice to up your damage, and the next choice should be Arbor of Agathis for those who dare attack you. The next level is going to be in Warlock 2. Warlock 2. Because invocations are awesome. Especially when you can take Devil's Sight and see everything at all times. There's not a lot of good choices at low levels, so I prefer Fiendish Vigor, as it can give you about 50% more health right now, and we can dump it later. For spells, Shield is a great choice as monsters to hit bonuses start rising, and you might need that extra boost. Next we go with Warlock 3 and the Pact of the Blade. You can chuck that plain old longsword away as you can just summon a magical one out of thin air. With second level Pact Magic you can now pick up darkness and utilize one of the coolest combos in the game. Just keep it away from your poor, nearly blind allies. And of course, drop Fiendish Vigor for that improved Pact Weapon. With Warlock 4 we can finally correct that annoying odd charisma score with Elven Accuracy Charisma. Now, that darkness sight combo is atrocious, and monsters who see a blob of black coming should start running. Cantrips are mostly flavor and utility now, so I like to go with Minor Illusion or Mage Hand if the party wizard, sorcerer or halfling doesn't already have it. For a second level spell, I like Mirror Image, especially for a defensive build, as those who even try to hit you will now have to try extra hard. Warlock 5 is where we stop for now, because if we're playing a defense damage dealer at level 6, you're already a bit behind. With Warlock 5, you take the only invocation that matters right now, Thirsting Blade. It's the Warlock's extra attack. For a third level spell, I recommend the only third level spell you need as a melee fighter, Fly. You know, for the enemies that think they can get away from you by flying away. At this stage, if your guide allows Eldritch versatility, you can swap out your Booming Blade for something else like Lightning Leo for that enemy that's just a bit too far away. Blade cantrips are incompatible with extra attacks unless you're a Bladesinger. Now we continue rounding out the Paladin. For a fighting style, you can take Dueling to deal more damage, but I prefer Defensive, as a plus one AC goes a longer way. For Paladin spells, go with Control Ones. Command is a good one to neutralize or disable enemies, even for one round it gives you a chance to close the distance. Compel Duel can be used to force the big hitter to focus on you, Protection from Evil and Good is a great defensive buff against the right enemies, and Shield of Faith is just a great defensive buff regardless. And you can finish it up with Divine Favor for a little damage boost. When you attack twice per round, another 1d4 can really make a difference. With the next level, we get to the Oath. 
With a frontline half defensive half hitter build, you can't really go wrong with Conquest. First of all, we get Command always propelled, so we can now switch it out for something else. We also get Armor of Agathis, so we can replace it next time we take a Warlock level. The Conquest Channel Divinity option gives you the ability to frighten nearby enemies, so it's another way to defend your allies. And you also get an option to upgrade your to hit, which will be probably only use later in the game when the ACs of BBEGs or armor class of big bad evil guys start seriously rising. As a half-caster, you don't get another propelled spell now, but you switch out command. This is a good time to take a smite option, and I like Wrathful because you can use it to frighten anyone who saved against your channel divinity. At Paladin 4, your available propelled spells increase, but it's also the time to upgrade your charisma to max, so you get another spell to propel. You can take another smite, searing causes ongoing damage, while thunderous does more damage and can knock a creature prone, giving your allies advantage. If they already ready actions 10 feet away from you, they can use it instantly. You can also take something like Bless to buff your allies. Despite being a frontliner, your AC should be high and constitution decent, not even considering aura protection later, so breaking your concentration will be quite hard. With Paladin 5, you get your martial extra attack. You can now switch out Thirsting Blade, which we will do soon enough. You also get access to second level spellcasting. Just cast Fine Steed once and switch it out. At this point, you can switch out lower level spells for beefier ones. Branding Smite is nice if you're going up against undead. Aid is cool for a defensive ally buff, and Zone of Truth is also great if you don't have a cleric readying it and you're about to interrogate someone. Now we take a little step back into Warlock 6, we switch out Thirsting Blade for Eldritch Smite, which is like Divine Smite but improved, in case you don't have enough smites. We can also drop Armor of Agathis for Spirit Shroud, which is another way to increase your damage and debuff your enemies, and you can also pick up Thunder Step, because everyone can use a good teleport in a pinch, or Dispel Magic slash Counterspell, depending on wh whether you like to guess when the enemy casts a spell, or take one hit and do it after the fact. Finishing up Paladin with 6 level Aura of Protection, now you're getting plus 5 to all your saves and also everyone around you. You also get another Propel spell, but it's still only 2nd level. Locate Object is a nice one to have because some of the things you do as an adventurer is trying to find things. At Warlock 7 you get access to some new invocations. There are a lot of them, but I don't find the ability to cast another spell to be worth an invocation. My favorite ones are Relentless Hex, that allows you to easily keep up with a moving hex target, or Tomb of Levistus, which despite being a bit debilitating, could be what saves you from a death blow or overkill damage. At this level you also get 4th level Warlock spells, so I recommend Phantasmal Killer for most usefulness. You can also dump Darkness for Shadow of Moil, which is basically upgraded darkness that's not so much about being a dick to your allies, and you're already casting everything at your highest level, so why not? Warlock 8 is a good time for another feat. There are many good ones, but I think it's a good time for tough. With one shot, you get 28 extra hit points and another guaranteed 2 every level. In the end, you'll have 40 extra. Want to see a non-barbarian cross the 200 threshold? Just you wait. For spells, you can now choose another one up to 4th level. Punishment is a good one to hit the boss or the lieutenant and save them for later. Elemental Bane is another good one if you find you're running into energy resistances a lot. The new summoning spells are also cool if you need a friend. For Warlock 9, you can choose another invocation. At this point, it's mostly dealer's choice, as there isn't much you can do right now to improve the build, so choose what makes more sense to you, and you can always switch every level. Ascendant Step is nice to turn yourself into a balloon, Whispers of the Grave turns you into a corpse communication center. I like Misty Visions because you can combine that with Minor Illusion to make complex illusions for fun and distractions. Now you have access to 5th level spells. I like to take Synaptic Static at this stage, it's an area effect damage and debuff. It's about the best you can get. With Warlock 10 you get another Hexblade feature with Armor of Hexes. It's kind of a silly and banal, but it makes you more durable versus the big bad you use your curse against, so that's good. You also get another cantrip, so you can go with another utility like Mage Hand. At Warlock 11 you get your 6th level Mystic Arcanium and another spell. Hold Monster is a great choice for holding that slippery bastard and giving everyone advantage. For your Mystic Arcanium, I like Mental Prism because despite it being a single target, it's a continuous damage and debuff. But depending on your game, you can take Circle of Death for a ton of instantaneous damage, or something like Mass Suggestion for turning crowds. For Warlock 12 you can take another feat, I recommend Crossbow Expert, you can switch to use only ranged weapon as they will be good in melee too. If you have a magic hand crossbow, even better. You can also take this feat 4 levels ago instead of tough if you want more damage instead of more hit points. If you do, you can combine it with Sharpshooter now to increase your ranged effectiveness at the price of melee and robustness. For an invocation, you can now take Life Drinker for a big damage boost. At Warlock 13 you get your 7th level Mystic Arcanium, for this I do believe Crown of Stars gives you the best bang for the buck. 
it's continuous, it's got Eldritch Blast range, it costs a bonus action, it's quite nasty damage, and pretty much only Celestials are resistant to it. For a spell, Wall of Light is quite similarly nasty and also debuffing. You need a dual focus to use them both, but even one at a time, they're great. Finally, Warlock 14, where you get the feature we've all been waiting for, Master of Hexes, which allows you to hold your Hexblades curse continuously. And that's it for the Padlock build. Thank you very much for watching, if you liked this video press the thumbs up button, subscription to the channel also helps a lot, hit the notification bell if you want to know about live streams, and that's it until next time, stay good, have fun.